What is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Fresh haircut. Say, nice haircut before we move on. Yep, head down. Uh-huh. Okay. Nice haircut. All right, let's go. We're doing builds for every single Guardian support in the game. That means no Bake, no Cthulhu, and no Jormungandr. But all the other Guardians we'll be doing builds for. We'll be going down each and every single god, talking about them very quickly. And just giving you guys the god so you guys can go out there, fresh new patch, Play around with Bobble if the character is good with Bobble or just whatever is the character is good with. Let's just jump right in. Starting with Ares, Spartan Flag, Cloak, Mystical Mail, Pesty, Purdue, and Eldritch Dagger. Again, it's going to be made aware, but Horrific is still the best relic in the game and it's not close at all. Buy it every single game. I am not trolling when I say every single game is a Horrific game. The only decision you have is, well, what's my second relic going to be? With Ares, it's Blink, it's Horrific, you're going to be starting fights, you're going to be getting as much damage onto the enemy as possible, you're going to be dominating laning phase. Prophetic, get those Prophetic cloak, cloak stacks. The Spartan Flag is to get that extra power from those auras to do just a little bit more damage. Ardeo, Sentinel's Embrace, Prophetic Cloak, Breastplate, Pesty. Just a really good base for items. Makes you very tanky, a lot of cooldown. Good anti-heal also to combo with Horrific because Ardeo probably has some of the lowest damage out of support. But you do just enough where it's annoying. And you combo Horrific with Pesty, you do just enough. The only thing I would say is make sure you don't get caught up diving with support RDO. She is more of a backline healing support with the Sentinels build. Next up, Athena. Spartan Flag, Prophetic Cloak, Thebes, Reverend Pridwin. The double stack into Pridwin build makes you incredibly tanky. A lot of cooldown here. Cooldown on the Relic Dagger also. I was considering either Bobble or Midgard, and you can go Bobble. I just think Midgard's survivability helps a little bit more. I think Bobble's also okay if you can live it. And then you combo the Horrific with Bracer. Next up, Atlas. Gonna be a little bit of a funkier build, because I think this is Atlas's best playstyle, where you go uber tanky to start the game, and then you're tanky enough with these items that you go Divine Spear of Deso with the Spartan Flag, and you do so much damage. Horrific reduces how much damage they're gonna do. Your ult reduces how much damage they're gonna do. Prophetic Cloak makes you mitigate those already reduced numbers that they're going to be doing. And then you can get under their backline with Blink. The build is all around insanely busted. Bacchus. A little rip off of Lastus' Bacchus build because I think this is just the best way to play him. Just double stacking into a Glad Shield and then you go Pridwin. And then Binding for just a little bit more damage. Again, horrific Blink. Horrific to reduce their healing, reduce their damage. Reduce the shielding, and then blink for that extra damage from the fire blink, and then also just the ability to get onto the enemy backline. Next up, Kabraken. I think Kabraken is probably the worst support in the game currently. I actually think Kumba is better than him. So we're going to be talking about this as a peel-oriented kind of Kabraken build. Kill the frontline or Kabraken build. Spartan Flag into Prophetic Cloak, get those stacks. Breastplate for that cooldown, and you're going to be going Vigilance to reduce the enemy's auto-attack damage. So late game... If you are getting autoed by the enemy ADC, you have this opportunity to live them for a little bit longer with Breastplate. Absolution for the cleanse. There's a bunch of CC in the game. It's just sick for Kabraken. Binding and Relic Dagger. Not a ton of over-the-top plays with this. It's just if you need that survivability from Absolution, use it. You're mostly just going to be trying to kill the enemy's frontliners. Horrific and Blink also. Cerberus. Sentinel's Embrace. Prophetic Cloak. Void Dumaru. Contagion. I think this is... Pretty negotiable. I think Serb has a lot of different playstyles, but this is the one that I preferred. Void Dumaro, you're just playing to kill with your mid laner. Contagion for that little bit of anti heal, and then just get a few more stacks on Cloak. And then Mantle Discord, Relic Dagger for some survivability with Scorching Blink and Horrific. Charon, the first Bobble user, and he, he is insanely good with 50% cooldown. Because his cooldowns are high, this makes his cooldowns super harass oriented. Spartan Flag, Cloak, Thebes, Pridwin, the double stack into Pridwin build. Classic. Relic Dagger, just to get this Bracer and this Horrific up as much as possible. But if you feel like you're dying a little bit too much, go a Spirit's Robe if you want. And then Bobble to get that 50% cooldown just for a bunch of harass. Next up, Fafnir. One of the few War Banner users, I think. Fafnir just j does really well with attack speed and movement speed. So War Banner gives you that a little bit of cooldown here in the first three items. I was really considering what I wanted this third item to be, and I landed on Mantle. Just for that super quick survivability spike. And then you can pair it with Sphinx's Bobble just because of how tanky Fafnir gets with his passive. And then you're obviously going Shoguns at all points. You could go the Shoguns earlier. It just doesn't feel as great because it doesn't give that cooldown anymore. But it's still going to be great on Fafnir. And then Horrific and Bracer for objectives. Next up, Ganesh. Compassion. Prophetic Cloak, Thebes, Pridwin. 40% cooldown on this build. Sphinx's Bobble, Spirit's Robe. You want that 50% cooldown build with Ganesh. He is insanely good because of how low his cooldowns already are and how impactful they are. And this is the only god that I gave three different ideas for relics because he's good with both wings and shell. 
It just depends on which one do you prefer. And I think it could change depending on the game. I think both are still phenomenal. And then literally the exact same build for Geb, except different relics. Geb, you kind of want that potential for engage. Ganesh has potential for engage just for dropping the cage. Geb wants it through blink, but the exact same six items as Ganesh, just a different one relic. And then again, horrific. I hope you see a pattern with horrific. It's in every single build. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Next up, Kepri. Slightly different than the Kepri and Ganesh builds, or sorry, the Geb and Ganesh builds, and it's because he doesn't make great use out of Pridwin. Breastplate just feels a lot better. You don't need that extra magical defense. You just get magical defense later with this Genji's guard, and then Breastplate, you just make better use of it. It gives you MP5 for spam ability. But this build, phenomenal on Kepri. Again, horrific, and then Bracer, just to be able to move around in your area. Kumakarna, really, I think, might be a bit sleeper right now with being able to build Sphinx's Bobble. But this is the exact same, except I think it's a different starter. Exact same as the Geb build. 40% cooldown, double stacking, bobble, and then robe to end it off to get that 50% cooldown. Again, just as a wide thing, if you have 40% cooldown with Sphinx's bobble, just make sure you're getting a blue augment. Should be known, but I just want to put it out there. And then blink, horrific. You're going to be blinking a whole lot. Kuzambo, Spartan Flag, Prophetic Cloak, Pridwin, Eldritch Dagger, 40% cooldown right off the rip. And then Sphinx's bobble. I have an early Relic Dagger because with Kuzambo, he has very low cooldowns. You just want to be blinking and pulling relics as much as you can. Getting blink up, getting horrific up all the time is just going to be the best possible case. Don't upgrade the Pridun or the, or the Relic Dagger too early. Do the Relic Dagger first, and then Glorious Pridun should be one of the last things you get. Maui, another War Banner God. I think he's the only other one. Cloak Thieves Pridwin. Double stack into Pridwin with Midgard Pesty for a little bit of survivability, and then Horrific Emblem Radiance. I don't think he needs any more than 30% cooldown. Even then, his cooldowns are not a problem. I just think you want a little bit more utility, and I think Midgard and Pesty allow that. So back, who'd have thought? 50% cooldown. He's got really impactful abilities. Every single one of his abilities are 12 seconds. So this makes it 6 seconds on all 3 of his base abilities. It makes it so tough to deal with the croc, just how tanky he is with double stacking also. This build is insane. Sylvanas. A backline-oriented Sylvanas build. There is the opportunity to go like a Blink war, yeah, war Flag build. I just think it's a little bit better to do this. Triple protections for allies, the shield for the allies, shield for yourself, and then just to make every ability come up faster. Horrific and Sprint. You can start Sprint with Sylvanas. Just make sure you get Horrific at level 12. Terra. I'm still a big fan of Mystical Male Terra. I think she just does so much damage with this build, and it's like she can threaten to kill your backline by herself with just the fire blink and then this build, you do so much damage, it is so hard to deal with. And you can do it pretty often. All you have to do is be reliant on your blink cooldown because you got 30% cooldown here. This build, great. And now that she has her one at level one, no matter what, her early game is good, her mid game is good, and her late game is phenomenal. She is insta-lock character. Next up, Xing Chen. Kind of the same thing as Kuzumbo. You're blinking in, forcing relics, trying to just harass as much as possible. It's literally the exact same style. There's a little bit more damage threat with Xing Chen. Kuzumbo is just a little bit more CC threat because he can just blink push you. He's not reliant on the ultimate being up to weirdly CC you and you can't just like on her ultimate like you can with Xing Chen ult, which makes Xing Chen just feel really weird. But he, I think he's still very threatening with his damage and 50% cooldown. It's good. Yamoja. Who'd have thought? Bobble. Not me. Quickly double stacking into a Pridwin. Sphinx's Bobble and then... Mantle of Discord, 50% cooldown. You can go something other than Compassion. I just think the easiest way to play Yamoja is just getting to late game and then just spamming your twos on your allies after ulting. It feels the easiest. There's obviously min-maxing with her, but I think this is just the easiest and the best. And then lastly, Ymir. Not a bobble god. A lot of self-survivability in it. Sentinels, Cloak. I was considering putting no Cloak in this build because of how bad he is at stacking it, but I still think it's just worth because if you do go late, you do get the stacks. You become very hard to deal with with this build. And Ymir, very threatening from ahead. If he falls behind, not too threatening. But at least with this build, you have that late game potential. And there it is, the 19 Guardians. If you guys do like this type of video, if you want builds for all sorts of supports, I can get one for Hell, Afro, the Assassins, maybe even like an Honor one. Let me know if you guys like these support builds, and I'll put one together for those other classes. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.